Today, I'm gonna attempt to save the world from the ultimate crisis using only savage orcs. Why? Because collapsing civilization is no fun if somebody else did it first. We're gonna be doing this as Wurzag the Great Green Prophet. And to be honest, the baseline challenge for this is not really a challenge. Because one, we start with a full army of savage orcs, and two, savage orcs are actually really, really good. Wurzag here is not only one of my favorite spellcasters in the game, but he also gives the savage orcs some absolutely insane bonuses. But the biggest thing that we have going for us is that our physical resistance is going to be absurdly high throughout this entire campaign. The problem with that is anything with magical attacks can just immediately demolish us, so we're just gonna try to avoid anything with magical attacks. And maybe succeed? I honestly don't know. Add time. If you don't want 300 naked green men to kick down your door and eat you, then it's time to try Opera GX. GX control allows you to limit the amount of resources that your browser uses so that you can do incredibly stupid things like run four copies of Baldur's Gate 3 while also watching nine separate guides simultaneously. Soon, GX control will become a requirement to consume a sufficient quantity of content to placate an average attention span, as TikToks with soap cutting and subway surfers on top of an AI voice reading out Reddit posts cause subtle yet permanent brain damage to all of us. Oh no. Mom found the poop sock. On top of dozens of incredibly useful features, Opera GX also has an absurd degree of customization. Mods are a new feature that allows you to completely change the look, feel, and sound of your browser almost instantly. From background music to all sorts of sound effects and visuals, each mod offers a fresh experience for doom scrolling the same three social media sites for 16 hours a day. My favorite is the medieval mod. It really makes you feel like you're a medieval peasant who made a pact with the devil for infinite knowledge at the cost of having no idea how to do anything valuable with it. You can try that and and many more mods in the GX store. Switching browsers may be a daunting prospect, but the quick import tool makes it easy by importing all of your settings, suspiciously empty browsing history, and bookmarks to make the good folks at the FBI's jobs as easy as possible. Link. Click. Click link. Link click. Click the link! To break up with basic browsers and get Opera GX today. I'm going to be setting the endgame crisis to ultimate crisis mode and having it trigger anywhere between turn 10 and turn 30 with a 10 turn warning. As usual, I'm going to be playing this on very hard campaign and battle difficulty with the AI stats modifier completely maxed out. I will be disabling the biggest wah uh, scenario though. We're playing the greenskins. We are the biggest wah. We begin in the middle of an absolutely hellish desert with no real redeeming qualities. This is a miserable place to be for anyone other than us, because we can actually suitably inhabit wastelands and most of these other really weird terrains that usually we would have some trouble with. We're gonna get rid of this hero here because one, we don't need him, and two, he's a filthy goblin. Fortunately though, we do actually have an army that we're allowed to use. These lads here are absolutely beautiful. They would be a bit more intimidating if they wore armor. I mean, it still works. If they can kill things before they get killed themselves, I would count that as a win. We're gonna put these filthy little goblins back in their rightful place, which is being dead. It seems that the balance of power recognizes our obvious superiority over these goblins. To be honest, it's hard not to. Even our archers could probably beat them in melee. So our whole MO is to essentially never stand still. And the reason for this is that our charge bonus is so absurdly high that as long as we're charging, we're almost certainly winning. But if we just stand still and get shot, we probably will die. Physical resistance does help, but it's not the same as having like shields and armor and missile resistance, which a lot of units do have. Oh my god, they're gone. They're gone instantly. We are taking some damage because we have no armor, but still, very impressed. Reject armor. Embrace taking large amounts of completely avoidable damage. Not bad at all. Yeah, I think we just take this now. Quite a bit of damage, more than I thought we would take, but not too terrible. I'm gonna immediately, before anything else, grab Foot of Gork. And, oh, we can't actually reach that. Oh yeah, these guys are so cheap. 69 upkeep. Nice. Actually cheaper than goblins as well. That's fucking wild. I think I'm probably gonna go up to the dwarves immediately and just see if I can rush them. Yeah, honestly, I'll just auto-resolve that. I think that's fine. Yeah, not bad at all. Not bad. Our economy's doing ridiculously well, considering the number of units we've recruited already. I mean, they are just so cheap for us. And yeah, we're now at a maxed out uh, army here as soon as we recruit those. Perfect. Going beautifully so far, our first foe is defeated, and now we can really start expanding. And I think I'm actually gonna go up here, take all of this, and then mount a real attack on Karaza Karak. Hey, that actually rhymed. We do need to be as fast as possible, though, because that endgame crisis is really looming over our heads. Oh my god, we auto resolve that? Yeah, we're gonna murder these motherfuckers. One thing that occasionally gets me in trouble when playing the greenskins is 
thinking. It's usually not advisable. You're best off 95% of the time just charging them and trying to kill the enemy as quickly as possible. I want to get onto their archers as quickly as I can, and then I want to make them very, very dead. Okay, unfortunately, we are taking a lot of damage from those archers, but soon... Yeah, you guys are freed up now. You charge there. Uh, here they're routing. Here they're going to route soon, and we haven't taken too much damage. Perhaps? There we go. That's the army losses right there. Beautiful. That was perfectly executed. I love the tactics with these guys. That is a big part of why I wanted to do this challenge. I love... Love, love, love glass cannon units. Now, these guys are not really glass. They're kind of just cannons, but they certainly aren't the sturdiest. They can take a lot of damage very quickly if micro poorly, especially against quite literally anything that does any amount of magical damage. Yeah, not many losses at all there. Oh, we just murk them. I won't actually do the confederation here for two reasons. One, I don't want the penalty to my relations with other orcs, or rather other greenskins. And two, I'll just get more experience by taking these settlements as I go up here, and leveling up Warzag is very important for me. Uh, we have a hundred Winds of Magic and Foot of Gork, therefore they're all dead. The one, like, awkward thing about our strategy here is that we're really prone to friendly fire from our magic because we have a ton of physical resistance and no magic resistance. And on top of being prone to that friendly fire, we're also just not very tanky. Uh, it would be really good to have a heavily armored unit like Black Orcs to temporarily hold the enemy in place, or ideally for a while hold the enemy in place, while we use Foot of Gork repeatedly on them. But that isn't the most viable strategy for us. And they are done. Not bad at all. Why the fuck are you there, brother? That's a bad choice. That's a bad decision that you have made. Oh yeah, force march and that army is not bad, but it's not as good as ours. I do want to be very, very careful of the blasting charges, however. Those are terrifying for me. Yes, we use this foot of York right there, and I think we're actually going to move our unit back at the last second. Okay, I was a little late there in moving my unit, but that was effective regardless. We can actually swap them out here. Uh, you can finish him off, honestly. You can finish him off in melee, and I think that is... Yep, that is the army losses. Beautiful. They think we're coming to save them, but we're not. We're also going to murder them. I'm not going to use my already injured units, because the whole point of minimizing damage is to get back up to full health as fast as possible. And because casualty replenishment works for each unit individually, taking more damage on our already damaged units would be a very bad idea. And we're going to wah as soon as we can, mostly so that it starts recovering faster. It's not the best time for a while right now, but uh, you can only start getting more points for the next one after you use it. Therefore, using it faster means more walls. Why are they still holding, though? They're not. That's the answer. They're not still holding. 240 kills. Not too bad. Oh, we got Spleen Ripper. That'll be very good. Now Wurzag can actually be somewhat mobile because he has a mount, especially when he always wants to be in the optimal spot to use his spells. And by spells, I mean Foot of Gork. That's the only spell that really matters here. We're actually going to be building up garrisons for the most part because that endgame crisis, I don't know what the fuck it's going to do to me. I've never had the ultimate crisis on before, let alone this early on. I am afraid. Okay, Thorgrim's there. Big brain plan. You move up here. This lad will slowly wipe this up, maybe take a little more territory here, whatever he can. Wurzag is going to be charging Karazakarak, taking as much of their territory as possible. Wiping out Thorgrim is the best way to start that off. If I don't wipe him out and he gets, like, deep into my territory, he could be a massive problem for me to deal with. Fuck. 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 I was really hoping he wouldn't back off. Oh my god. Oh, that is perfect. Fortunately, he has mostly melee units. If he had a lot of ranged units, this would be a terrible fight, because I can't really flank him here, and he has enough melee units to just kind of clog that up. If he had some, like, really, really good rage units, that would be a problem. They also have a lot of armor-piercing damage, which does not help them in the slightest, because we have zero armor. <laughs> Having massive weaknesses sometimes means that your enemies don't have strengths, which in turn is kind of good for you. Not really good for you, but just not bad for you when they have what would otherwise be a really dangerous thing. So many orcs, such a small passageway. We have exactly eight feet of gork total. Ooh, 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 that's a big blob. Oh shit, that was so good. That was so good. Why are you doing that, Gyrocopter? Why are you doing that to yourself? That does hurt my fucking best unit, but also, like, they'll kill you easily. Okay, please don't use it. Oh, they used it. Oh, fuck. Oh, that hurts. It's not magical, though, so it won't do too much damage. Oh, that was glorious. Oh, 3,000 value. 3,000 value. You fucking love to see it. Oh, yeah, they're gone. They're gone. They're fucking gone. Close victory? Are you... F oh, my God. 
Oh, insulting. Insulting to my beautiful green boys. Oh no. Oh, this is literally the second worst case scenario. Because this is turn 11. It was set to start between turns 10 and 30. I do have a 10 turn warning, but still, that is the second earliest it could possibly have started. It's all of them too. It's all of them. Why did I do this to myself? Why did I think this was a good idea? I may have made a mistake here. So uh, what we're going to do is for the next 10 turns, we're going to be as hyper aggressive as physically possible. I just, I want to get myself into a point where I have as few normal enemies as possible. And I also want to get uh, Wurzag ranked up as much as I possibly can, which, oh, yes, we got this. That is huge. That is awesome. Because we're fighting the dwarves right now, we grab this immediately because they have magical resistance on all of their units, like 20%. So that'll be insane for our feet of Gork. All right, we're back up to a decent income, mostly by raiding, despite having two armies. Titanic feet, that is very awesome. We are going to burn our economy into the ground by grabbing another lord. I think we can do this mission now. We can indeed. Heroic victory auto resolve, I will take that. Looks like a lot of goblins. I didn't actually read the description of this one. We're just gonna fucking murder them. Oh, these guys really are just awesome. But then, the wall just goes on forever. There's just an infinite number of savage orcs here. We have so many. And they're all just very good in melee. Ooh, 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 what the fuck? Shoot him from afar. I can't do that. That's not in my repertoire. What that means is that I need Wurzag to personally kill them because otherwise they are just going to kill a lot of my boys and I don't want that to happen. Okay, so we're not getting murdered by- Oh, they have them on the other side too. Oh shit, I thought it was only on one side. All right, you're the sacrificial lamb. You're dying. Try and take all three of them out with you, please. I only have one Wurzag, unfortunately. Although, I think that is for the good of the world. <laughs> Honestly. Oh yeah, that one unit's gone. That unit's literally entirely gone. Every one of them's dead. Oh man. Oh, they have so many. They have so many. They have so many of the exploding squigs. Oh shit. Oh, that's so bad. Oh no. Oh, that's so much damage. Okay, Wurzag's doing a good job. But there's so many of the fuckers. Please shoot them. Oh, they're missing so much. Okay, they're finally hitting. They're finally hitting. One more shot. One more shot. One more shot. Don't fail me, please. Don't fail me, please. Just shoot him. Just shoot him. Just shoot him. They're dead. Okay, thank you. There's so many. They're just, they just keep coming. You're low rank. You can die. That's fine. That's fine. I spread out as much as physically fucking possible. That's what I do. Oh god, they're gonna kill Wurzag. There's so many of them. They're gonna kill Wurzag. No. No. Don't you fucking dare kill Wurzag. He's faster than you, right? He's faster than you. Why are you catching him? He's faster than you. No, Wurzag. Go. You can get out. You can get out. I promise, Wurzag. Just move. You can get out of there. Okay, another unit dead. Another unit just completely fucking dead. We have no other way to deal with this than just letting them explode on us. I hate this. I hate this. I should not have done this quest battle at all. I didn't know what I was signing up for, man. So many of my beautiful boys, they're just dying. That was... <laughs> that was not what I was expecting, and it was infinitely worse than what I was expecting. Oh, we lost so many of our beautiful boys here. We lost so many of them, and we can't use any of the ROR's. Over here, do I want to fight this? Oh. Oh god. Oh, I don't. Do I have to fight this though? I think I kind of do. Oof, that's a lot of damage. Aggressive destroyer. Fuck it, I do this. I do this. 5,000 gold. That hurts my economy a bit in the short and long term, but I think it is worthwhile here. I'm afraid of the future, but the present is relatively all right. As long as we didn't have the endgame crisis, I would be very confident about this campaign. Honestly, we would probably steamroll very quickly here if we had another 10 turns before that endgame crisis. As it is though, shit is gonna be tough. That's actually pretty good for me. We foot of gork them repeatedly and painfully and deadly Lee. That's not a word. <laughs> Close enough. Okay, they are rushing us. Well, rushing is a bit. <laughs> that's a bit of an overstatement. They're dwarves. They're moving as fast as they can. Uh, you guys charge. They should go down pretty much instantly because they've already taken so much damage. Oh, and we can use ear we go here as well. That'll just skyrocket our melee attack. Let's see what it looks like with the ear we go. Oh yes, that's 111 melee attack on the bigots without the wall. With the wall here. That is 123 melee attack. That is a fair amount of melee attack right fucking there, especially with 66 charge bonus, effectively getting that up to nearly 200 melee attack while they're charging. That is insane, and well over 100 weapon strength momentarily there. That is awesome. Economies? 
interesting again, but it's fine. We have replenishment now. That's good. Ah, you little fucking gits. They're stealing that settlement out from under me. That's so annoying. I think what I do is probably just attack them. Yes, this should be a relatively easy one. It won't be that bad. Yeah, just immediately attack them on three sides. Fucking murder them. I know you want to. I know you want to. I know you want to. Yep, yep, they've gone in the melee. Those fucking idiots. Every time, man. I give it 30 seconds before they give up here. And that's the army losses right there. Yep, beautiful. Another Pyrrhic victory. I can't say I love those, but our lack of armor does make them somewhat unavoidable in many situations. When a rusty nail wielded by a small child could kill any unit in your army, staying alive can be somewhat difficult. 10 armor? Hell of a lot better than zero armor. It's still shit, but we can make it work. Okay, we're gonna attempt this. We just use Foot of Gork innumerable times on them, and then they're dead. How much value? 3,300. Not bad. Not bad at all. It might be a good idea for me to take this territory. The more settlements we have, the more gold we have, and the more gold we have, the more green boys we have. The more green boys we have, the more likely we are to not get entirely massacred, but only 90% massacred by the endgame crisis. Blanking is always our friend, and getting shot with arrows is always not our friend. None of their units are actually being attacked in the rear there, because they've created a circle. <laughs> That took longer than I thought it would, and we took more damage than I thought we would, but we did win it. Even though we only have 15 units, and we do have a Valiant Defeat auto resolve there, I'm very confident here. Uh, we want to go up here, charge downhill into them, and kill them. Uh, they should get hit with that, even though they're moving away. Yep, yep, they're gone. They're gone. It's one of their last two for sure. It might be their actual last settlement. We might have just wiped out Karaza Karak. Uh, until the endgame crisis triggers in, oh fuck, three turns, uh, we are good here on the north side. I don't know if they'll revive fucking Thorgrim though and have him immediately attack me, I don't know. Oh dear. It begins, and this also begins, and this one begins too. Four, five, six... Okay, only six. I was not prepared for that, and I can't quite reach here. We also don't have lightning strike yet. I don't know if we can win this. I don't think we can win this, brother. I think we lose this shit, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, those armies are so good. They're just everywhere. There's, there's endgame crises everywhere here. But it does look like most of them aren't gonna be immediate problems for us. The real short-term problem is the dwarves, and only the dwarves. I think we start over here with Warzag. Uh, we're gonna foot of gork them so many times that they should die. And I'll also declare the wall. Uh, I don't think it really needs to be against a faction that I'm actually gonna fight. We'll just set that up. 10% weapon strength, plus a better wall in all of our armies. I actually do think that we will probably be keeping the wall armies. I initially was thinking, no, we're gonna go strict with this. But I'm quite confident that without them, this is unwinnable. I believe there is precisely a 0% chance of winning this. So I'm just gonna auto-resolve it. We can't afford to lose that many settlements, man. Mistakes have certainly been made. Large ones. We have enough feet of Gork to kill them. Probably. If we can't win this, it's over. What I'm gonna do is avoid actually fighting them and just use foot of Gork as much as physically possible. All right, we'll start all the way back there. You start up here. Uh, the good thing is, because they have so many units that are each so strong, we will be able to get a lot of value with our casts. The bad thing is that they'll still probably win the battle. <laughs> that is very poggers. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That was a thousand value from one cast. It was overcasted, but still. Oh, that was so good. 6,300 value now. This is one of like 20 armies, man, at least. I don't know if I'm winning this thing overall, but I'm beating this army for damn sure. Uh, you boys start charging. Good, 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 good. I like all the things I'm seeing right now, except for the Iron Drakes. They are fighting to the death, which is very unfortunate for us, but I do think we can kill them here, even if they fight absolutely to the death. Is that the army losses? Holy shit. That was so fucking difficult. We didn't lose any units though, but still, that was scary. Oh, we're gonna be fighting for our fucking life here. We really are. Okay, you're not a attacking me. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for not attacking me. I appreciate that. Okay, he's force marching. He's force marching into the ambush. Oh, shit. This is a perfect army to have ambushed. We got very, very lucky here. I am not gonna lie. Okay, we're gonna pause immediately here. That's why I don't play on legendary, because I fucking hate not being able to pause. It's so annoying. Uh, and we're gonna charge all of these motherfuckers. They're panicking. You debuff that middle section, and we just kill it. We just kill it 
as fast as we possibly can. We're going to get that wall relatively quickly or with the number of units that we have in melee here. Oh yes, that artillery's gone. We've gotten so much value immediately from that. How in the hell are these guys still holding? They should be done here in a second. Yeah, there they are. Okay, wonderful. That was as good as it could have possibly been. Thorgrim is also attacking that. Okay, wow. He does a lot better in autosolve and he just is stronger. They're just letting this one small group of their army die immediately. Gotta say, good decision. Not for them, but for me. Charge Charge back here, charge back here. Even if you die, just distracting them for so long is good. A wee bit of a blob here. I must say I'm very glad that they don't have like Flamestorm or any spells at all. Uh, over here, you guys are doing a great job of just distracting those units, actually killing those Thunderers too. That's awesome. The balance of power is looking good now. 2v1, we beat their armies. And after this, they only have like two armies in our territory. So we can recover a little bit and we can potentially survive this. The most enjoyable situations in Total Warhammer are those where survival is not guaranteed. Guaranteed. And this, this is one of those. Yeah, the size of victory, they do survive that, but only with five units. Uh, they will take this though, that sucks. Well, that's good. He's in Force March, and we can reach him here. And also we can reinforce here. Extremely Pog. We can definitely do this. I'm sorry, what? I could have fucking sworn that that army was going to reinforce me here. I thought I checked. I thought I double checked. That was a bad campaign map move, not having them close enough. But we can make up for it in the battle. And now we can probably just finish them off the old-fashioned way. How in the fuck are you still fighting with the army losses? You have a minus 120 debuff to your leadership, and you are still fighting. They have so many buffs. Other 31. Heroic victory! Heroic finally! Finally! Oh, we needed that. Yeah, we've knocked Karaza Karak back down to a normal amount of balance of power. That is actually really crazy. Have you not learned? Oh, that's all ROR's. Okay, that could be dangerous then. Heroic victory once again? My god, we're finally getting the recognition that we deserve. To be fair though, a lot of those Pyrrhic victories were very Pyrrhic. Like, they were, they were very much Pyrrhic. <laughs> the game was not wrong in that description. <laughs> This will take a good while, because we're not going to be able to auto-resolve anything here, because I don't trust that shit. Uh, not when the stakes are this high and also this difficult. But we should actually start winning here. I think we're going to start turning the tides. I think we already have, honestly. Killing that first army and proving that it was possible, that really actually got me thinking, oh, I can win this. And now, I, I think I'm going to. I think we're going to survive this. Sorry, what? <laughs> We've created a chainsaw. We've created a chainsaw out of these guys. That's how they get pumped up, I guess. That's how they get ready for the battle. <laughs> that is good. We put that on Morzak. Fuck yeah. And we got some big buffs. We got some really big buffs. We just got this. Eight melee attack, 5% replenishment, and also scrap upgrades. Those are all good. Fuck, I'm gonna have to fight this manually, but it's gonna be boring. This is not gonna be an entertaining one. Oh, finally. Okay, they're done. Very, very nice. We finally have Karaza Karak. Karaza back? That didn't make sense. <laughs> uh, but we have Karaza Karak again. Uh, that is very good. Our economy will be doing a lot better because of that. Uh, I think we can finally auto-resolve this one. We can afford that right now. It's, it's okay. Yeah, I actually do not know where the fuck they went here. Oh, here, here. God, that balance of power does look bad. I think we do actually win this. Barely. Oh my fucking god, that's that's a lot of damage from those cannons. I really did not think they would actually shoot him, because he's so small, but they hit him too. I don't think they're actually firing... Are they firing at all? I was gonna say, I don't think they're firing very effectively, but they're barely firing at all. They've used no ammo on those thunders. What the fuck are they doing? <laughs> what? Oh, that hurts though, that hurts. Oh god, blasting charges. Why are the cannons leaving the cannons? That was a painful one, but we did win it. We're actually pretty much back to where we were before the endgame crisis, which... I'm happy with. I'm happy to just be back to that point, because that was not easy. If I lost Warzag, there's no shot the other armies could have carried for him, even for like those few turns. Really? Really, man? What? Why? Why so many Undercities? I just got rid of one. Yep, Valiant Defeat Auto Resolve, somehow. I think it's really just because they're buffed to fucking hell and back. I mean, look at that. <laughs> Above 60 for melee attack, melee defense, and weapon strength and double that for armor and leadership, so they're fairly strong, I would say. A few feet of Gork, though, should be sufficient to stomp them into the ground. Without armor, though, it probably feels like stepping on Legos for Gork. I can't imagine he appreciates that. Oh, shit! 
A rat! Dude, get out of my fucking basement. Why is every rat in the fucking game just in my settlements? Attack me again, you fucking cowards. Oh, well, they actually, they actually did it. Uh, we lose no units there, and they should all be wiped out from that. So I think that's more than acceptable. Yes, we destroyed them once again. Oh, we already killed them once entirely, but now we killed them again entirely. I, I've got to say, I don't want to kill them for a third time. That would be a bit much. Please stay dead this time. There are a lot more very, very strong factions that do want to kill me. But none of them are right in the middle of my territory, so we are chilling for a moment. I think that these kind of count as savage orcs. They're not wearing much in the way of clothing. I'm gonna count them as savage orcs, and I'm gonna include them for the sole purpose of getting more Feed of Gork. At this point, I finally felt safe and confident enough to start heading towards Belagar to complete the WA. Then this happened. As you can see, we have a couple of Skaven armies that we need to deal with quite urgently, so I commenced a tactical retreat to the Eastern Front. This might actually be possible solely due to their horrific army composition. They have two melee units and they're both almost dead. Um, which part of the wall are they shooting? Oh my god, the wall's about to break. Get off of that shit. Get off of it. Get away from it. It's gonna fucking blow. Get over here. Dude, follow the movement order, you fucking piece of shit. Oh, now you're dead. Oh god, that artillery hurts. Yeah, they killed half of this unit of trolls instantly. Oh, how did they take this? We have a fucking unit right here and their units on here are so low health. How did they have that capture weight? That is insane. Is that the army losses? That should be, yes. Oh my god. Oh, painful, but we took it. Yeah, they uh, they kind of fought to the death there. Their only unit that survived is the cannons and maybe the organ guns too, but fucking hell, these two did so much damage so fast to me. I forgot just how insanely strong organ guns are. They really are terrifying. I believe there's a big army army in here, but I'm also pretty confident that we should wipe them out. That should be just about right. I think that was a little too far out maybe, but oh my god. Zero models killed, but exactly like 98% damage on these Skaven Slaves. It is so rare that you can do this much damage to a unit without killing any of the models. That is insane. I, I have very rarely done the endgame crisis in my own campaigns, and I've never done the Skaven one, so definitely threw me off here that they started late. Uh, we'll go for Karakate Peaks just because we can get there in one turn. I think I'll do this for the sole purpose of encouraging more of my enemies to declare war on these guys, and also seeing their territory. Seeing their territory is big. What? In what world does this garrison do that much damage to them? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm not asking questions. Okay, you're there. I can probably kill you. If I can reach you, you're dead. You can reach them easily. I don't know why they're there. So good to deal with them. And that was probably their best army. Let me actually see their balance of power now. Nope, it's still terrifyingly good. And lightning strike. Oh my god, we needed that shit. We needed that. <laughs> Still a risky situation, because there are just a lot of people who really want to kill us, and they're much stronger than we are. But I think we can survive this. I believe in the green boys, and their naked wonderful powers of mostly just murdering things. But, you know, that's good enough. That's all we need them to do. Uh, you're a problem, but I do think I'll kill you soon, so I don't mind too much. I'll just quickly scout over here, then probably get rid of this guy. I don't really need to be too aware of what's going on over here. Uh, there are armies coming my way, but oh, it's good that I scouted here because now I know where most of their forces are. Well, oh no, I don't actually because this is not most of their forces. These are just Skaven slaves. Wow, that is impressive that they have three armies this bad during the endgame crisis. We finally have gotten this province back. It only took like three years, but they're dead now. Well, most of them are, not all of them. Okay, all right. Uh, we do win this in auto-resolve. I don't know why he would do that. Also, they don't do magical damage, and we have, let's see here, uh, 8% plus 50% plus 30%. We have 88 fucking percent resistance against their missiles. Ah, shit, I used the dwarf timing for them again. Gotta use Skaven timing. The Skaven are very fast in terms of their infantry. The dwarves are very slow, so we use it here rather than right next to them. Also, they've done a brilliant strategy of having all of their melee units over here and all of their ranged units over here, which means I can just go over here and kill all their ranged units. Yep, shooting us in the face and they're doing very, very, very little damage. They are knocking us back physically, but that's all they're doing to us, really. Just slowing us down slightly because of the velocity of their bullets hitting us. Yeah, the Rattling Gunners are voluntarily going into melee because they've realized that their bullets simply don't work. Ah, uh, love the smell of Skaven corpses in the morning, and the afternoon, and evening, and around my bed as I'm sleeping. I use them as pillows. They're actually quite comfy. The balance of power doesn't seem to agree, but I think they're pretty much fucking done here. Heroic victory? Alright, I will take that. They did literally nothing. 
That is insane. We are just immune to missiles. Oh, fuck. I should have been in raiding stance to increase my ambush defense chance, but I didn't do that. Therefore, we're in a little bit of a sticky situation here. Oh, they're finally attacking me. Okay. Yeah, they've done a bad job here. They've really set themselves up for failure, as far as I can see here. Like, very easily, our cavalry immediately kill these unprotected uh, <laughs> artillery units. Okay, that's cool. Uh, I think we can probably just retreat after killing this first army, if all goes well, which I think it will here. I think it will. I I'm moderately confident, which is more confident than I usually am. And yeah, they're coming in now. They're just starting to come in. We can't fight the second army, so we won't. We, we just won't fight them. Uh, we'll just leave. Uh, no man left behind unless we kind of need to leave you behind, in which case we absolutely will. <laughs> yes, we actually successfully retreated there. We won this overall. We killed a full army, and that second army we can now defeat after getting that one turn of replenishment. Terrifying number of armies around us. And now the murder spree will begin. Why are you even here? I thought they would have doom stacks. Why was I even afraid of these guys? They have shit. Unfortunately, fighting 15 very difficult and similar battles in a row started to break down the final crumbs of sanity within my brain, so we're gonna skip through the next few battles. Balance of power is getting ever so close to even... Well, I mean, compared to where it was before, at least. They never seem to learn, no matter how many of their armies I kill. They just keep sending more. Granted, they do have plenty more to send, but I'm not gonna run out of killing power as long as I keep playing reasonably decent. Oh, hell yeah. 10% weapon strength, yes please. Yep, unfortunate. Ooh, we do have some significant debuffs, but we can deal with these really quickly by getting that back up, by just killing a lot of things, like this. So essentially, we've just forced them to fight us down this hill and blob them up so that we can do this. The friendly fire from that is pretty significant, but I think it's still worthwhile because he has almost 2,000 gold value, which is pretty good for like three basic casts of Foot of Gork. Already filling that back up, and we should not be a bottom feeder for much longer. Uh, and then we take this, and then we've taken this whole region. The fact that we are alive, let alone thriving and expanding, given this endgame crisis and the limitation of only using <laughs> Savage Orcs, I have impressed myself. I did not think I would be able to do this. This is the hardest challenge I have ever done. This is the type of odds we were up against. And we have turned the major factions that fought us down to this. Even balance of power, even balance of power here actually in our favor. And we even wiped out the main one. We even wiped out Karaza Karak as well completely. These Savage Orcs have truly impressed me. They are wonderful, beautiful, glorious creatures, and they need to be protected at all costs. Well, really, they don't need to be protected at all because they've kind of killed everyone who could possibly threaten them. Uh, but yeah, we are now at a point where this campaign is not unlosable, but as unlosable as it will be for the next probably 20, 30 hours of gameplay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, uh, I think we're in a solid spot here. We've gotten through the hardest parts. I honestly did not think that Warzag was quite this strong. I knew he was strong, but let's take a look here at the units in his army. 58% physical resistance effectively, plus 22 armor, but 30% missile resistance on top of that. My brain didn't compute how strong that was until I actually got shot with these guys, because that is 88% resistance against physical missiles. Nine arrows is one arrow. That's insane. That is wild. Bananas. And on top of that, 63 charge bonus, 59 melee attack, 31 melee defense, 48 weapon strength, 75 leadership, 41 speed, 22 armor, almost 10,000 HP. These guys are a fucking force of nature, and these aren't even the big ones. The big ones are even stronger. They're so much stronger. <laughs> we are absurdly overpowered now. If this was a normal campaign, I might have gotten the fucking long victory by now, man. We have literally single-handedly saved the world from the ultimate crisis with just naked green men. I am very happy with that. Big thanks to my patrons and YouTube members as always, and thank you for watching. Peace out.